I've been asked by one of the uh, people on the channel, how do you get a object that you're working with to be exactly a particular pixel size or millimeters, but keep the proportions when you do size them? So I'm going to be showing you how to do that with a vector image. So this is the design that we've done and they're all different components. I've just grouped them together. But the dimensions on this outside area here um, is a specific dimension. So key to note that if you're using a normal pixel-based image, you don't have to worry about this. But if you're using vectors and you're going to be sizing and making it bigger and smaller, I'd advise that you go to the stroke panel in the panels here and make sure that scale with object is set to on. Because what this does is that if you scale the object, the stroke itself will proportionately size. If you don't have that, in some cases when you make it small, for example, the text that's over here will have an outline or this design will have an outline and it's a thick uh, stroke. And when you make it small, that stroke doesn't get small with the actual size of the object because it's all dynamic and you'll have a very distorted uh, image that you're working with. So it's important working with vectors to make sure scale with object is on. Next thing to be aware of is the transformation that you're going to pull into this. And there's a panel here called transform. If you don't have it available anywhere, just go to the windows, look down here to the bottom, you'll see transform. In my case, it's checked here. That's why it's available. Okay, I'm going to left mouse drag this across so we can see it a bit better. Just to go through these dialogues here, this particular dialogue is to say that if you transform this, if you sh make it smaller or bigger, what axis are you doing it around? If it's if it's this here by default, the top left corner, if you change any of these sizes, it will size towards that area. So if I make this smaller, it will go up towards this corner so the object will be here. If I want to make it center size around the center area here, then I can click this little center dot. You'll see it will get slightly bigger. Or the bottom right area, bottom. So these are the different areas around which this transformation will take place. The X and Y is just its position on this whole artboard. If I move this around, you'll see the X and Y changes, okay? That rotate and shear, we're not going to be dealing with it. I think kind of self-explanatory, you can put in percentages there. And remember here, you can put positive or negative percentages that will move it either left or right. The ones that we're going to be focusing now on at the moment is this here, the W and the H. Now, by default, this little lock aspect ratio is off. By default, it is like that. First step you've got to do is go and click that. What that does is it locks the ratio of the width and the height. So it will always keep this thing proportionate. And that's what you want to do because when you start sizing, you don't want the thing to become longer than uh, wider. It just doesn't work um, in designing with objects unless you want to stretch it. But you've got to do that very cautiously else you're going to lose a lot of visual proportionality. So the first thing is you're going to lock those two. Okay, so we have it at that point. So the question was, how can I proportionately size these things to the T? Now here you see it's got 700 pixels. Now you can go sit in the editing there. You can go sit, you know, whether it must be pixels, whether it's got to be millimeters or so forth. Um, but you can actually type over type this here. So if, for example, if I want this to be 50 millimeters, I can click once on there and just type 50 and mm. Press enter. What it's going to do, because it's locked, it's going to change this bottom one proportionately around the center. So that's 50 millimeters. It will default to showing you the pixels, but you, you don't have to limit yourself because it's showing pixels here. Like if I want to put in here 200 millimeters, it will take it to that size, but it will show me what the pixel value is here. If I want to make this by default always be millimeters, then I can go set it in its configuration. That's a video for another time. But yeah, at the moment, let's stick to working with pixels. So I'm going to just type in 750. But you notice when I change this one item, this bottom item changed automatically because it's locked over there now. And if I type in at the bottom or the top, it doesn't matter. Say the height is a specific value that I want to make sure if I want to make the height must be 600. 
the, the top one will just follow suit the width proportionately in that case. Okay, so that is how you do it proportionately. However, there are a few other things that Affinity Designer really makes work quite cool. Let me take this back to 700 possibly. You can start using things like doubling, multiplying it by a factor, dividing it and all that sort of stuff. So there's formulas you can use, tons of formulas, uh, a bit above my pay grade as far as all the mathematic things go, but I'm going to show you basically the the multiply and divide, because in some cases that, that will particularly help. So if I go here and I divide, I put the division sign, I put a division sign and I say 2. It's going to divide what I have there by 2. Now I could work it out, I could say just go type in 350, but Let's show you how it works. Say divide by 2, press enter. It will go down to 350, you see, in that case. Where it becomes more technical is if I want to increase this by 2.35, a factor of 2.35. Now, when you increase, you don't use the forward slash as a division. You use a multiplication, and you go 2.35, and you press enter it will increase by that proportion that you're putting in. So that's multiplication and division. Um, like I said, you could use other formulas, but um, it's like above my pay grade there. So yes, so you get to this stage. What happens now when you want to take this particular image out? Because you're working on this big artboard, uh, how, how do you manage this. You, If you export this, now it's going to export the artboard and not just this size object that you work so hard in getting the size sorted. So let me type this back to 700. How you get to move this, what I do is I select the object, I press Control c to copy it, so it's copied into the clipboard, then press Control shift and keep Alt, Control shift alt and press N. It's going to copy what's in the clipboard into a new design. Press N, there it takes it beautifully out in its own design. However, you might find that because it's so close to the edges, because this vector works so close to the edges, you might want to make the content, the design inside, a bit smaller than the actual box that you've created. So let me just go here and uh, I'm going to create an artboard quickly. I'm going to click artboard and say insert artboard with, with this particular document. So it's going to put the artboard in there. Now, if I click on artboard and we look over here, you can see that it's showing me that the artboard is slightly bigger than the actual design that we brought across. So what we can do is I'll take the design itself. You see it's on 700. I'm going to make it, if I go artboard, let me check artboard is 706. I'm going to make the artboard at 700. So I'm going to make click on the design, it's 700, I'm going to make it less than 6, or maybe I'll, I'll make it even 10, maybe take it to 690, so I'm going to take, that goes to 690, so you can see that the actual design inside has dropped, but the artboard, which is what ultimately is going to go out as the full element that you want to send out, that needs to be the 700 that we have started off with say 700 and there we go we can even go and take the 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 eagle logo here and take it down to say 670 we can because the outside artboard is the actual 700 we originally want to go for the design we can kind of size it inside here because ultimately as you export it it will be exported as a 700 pixel in width by 613.7 pixels in height Okay, so here again, you could just manipulate this that best fits in and looks over here, and that will work for you. So hopefully that helps you because, um, yeah, it's not just good enough to size it down and when you move it on its own, you're sitting with the same problem. So hopefully this clarifies that area. And don't get too anxious that your actual vector art is not the 700 because it's the artboard that matters. That's what gets exported, the whole thing in that perspective. And this gives you a nice kind of clearance from the edges there when you're working. Great stuff. Hopefully that helps. Have a 
blessed day and shalom to everybody.